So I want you to say, welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. Yes. Welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. Some of you are trying to meet others who are going so fast. So let's do it with our spiritual consciousness here. Welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. Once more. Welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. Talk to him like you need him. Come on. Welcome the Holy Spirit. In your mind. Welcome, Holy Spirit, in my mind. Come on. Welcome, Holy Spirit, in my mind. Once more. Welcome, Holy Spirit, in my mind. Give me peace, Lord. Give me peace, Lord. Give me peace, Lord. Once more. Give me peace, Lord, and heal my mind, Lord. Accepted and believe it. Because you said, but well, 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 I didn't make this up. If you check your Bible, it says in there, it reads, up. I will stand like in that talk at the door and what? Knock. Simply means I need your permission. I don't bombard your house. I don't kick the door down and come in your life and in your mind. But when you say, welcome, Holy Spirit, in my mind, there is a response. If he, she, shows up instantaneously and does what you let him do. If you say speak, he speaks. If you say teach me, he teaches. If you say heal, he heals. If you say give, he gives. In that moment, so I stand here asking you to give me the message that is right for you. And I am one who believes in speaking in tongues. So if you don't like it, it's time for you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> because what that simply means to me, it's written in the book. And they heard him speak. See, it ain't all about the speaker. Is to heal. Uh huh. And they heard them speak in other tongues, and each received in his own language. So what's happening here today? The Holy Spirit will speak. I mean, I'll just channel and download and say what I'm listening to. But it's up to you to hear, and each one will hear in his own understanding. That's all speaking in tongues means. So here we go. My topic is going back another way. You got to say it with me. Going back another way. Going back another way. Going back another way. This is December 31st. And when you wake up in the morning, it'll be a whole new year. But you don't want to take anything from last year into new year that wasn't working for you. You don't want to take anything in the morning of this old year and those years past that's been blocking your ill, that's been blocking your good, that's been blocking your stuff, that's been blocking your blocking your blocking. Right? And it's not going to happen if you go in the same old way, carrying the same old stuff. And you got to download first, then you got to unload. You got to unload everything and everybody that's been on your back. That's been stopping you from moving forward. That's what happened to me in this year. Because I downloaded first, I unloaded. And I'm going into next year light. It started right here two years ago. On Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., I see some faces who were here. And I did a two-year workshop on Tuesdays, January through October. But I told everybody when they first sit down, this workshop is for me. Now, I'm coming for a heal. Didn't I say it? Yeah. Now, if you want to heal along with me, you can go along and get to us, too. But I'm here to tell you today that I got mine. But it took me two years. See, it could have happened in one minute. 
It could have happened in one week, one month. It could have happened the first year. But I had to download for two years, and in the October of the second year, I unloaded. So I'm free. And I'm continuing the workshops over the LA 3rd on Tuesdays again, if you want to join up. But what I am saying is that the message for you today is how to stop. And what I'm going through in the, in the workshop is how to revive stuff that's, that's already got you messed up. You know, I'm using Neville. Neville teaches you how to revise, how to straighten up stuff that you've done messed up in the past. But what I'm talking about today first is how to stop so that you can go into next year the right way. Uh, some of you will have people, situations and things in your life who are dealing with sickness, dealing with crazy stuff, dealing with always needing help. Have I talked? <laughs> need loan until they get the income tax. <laughs> Put some money on the books. <coughs> you want to buy some food stamps. Don't nobody help me. You got any of those situations? You remember when they can't let go of old stuff and the past stuff, am I right? Until oh, yeah. I get on my feet. <laughs> 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 I'm not talking about it. I'm just talking about your cousins. <laughs> Some people start thinking I'm talking about you. We don't have those problems. There's always somebody else. <laughs> Am I right? Right. And the first step in changing them is to what? Change. Is to change yourself. So you spent all of this year trying to change them. And that was my problem. You know, I'm keeping, kept expecting somebody else to change because I know best and I know how to change you. And it wasn't until I learned, it took me two years, 35 years of preaching this. And then two years of a workshop to accept what I learned first from the, on the first day I walked in here is that you can't change other people. And when the closer it is to you, the more you try to do that. Am I right? And the more spiritual you are, the more you try to do that. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that it didn't work, it's not going to work. Now the way that it's going to work is by you learning how to go back another way. And what finally helped me was you were here because I used you to grow through and grow on by teaching. I learned a long time ago from reading Neville in a book many years ago. He talked about demonstration in his own life. That whenever he had a particular need for a healing, he would preach a sermon to himself. So I came preaching sermons to you, but it was to myself. And that's how my healing came. And when I taught here that series, The Serenity of Prayer, that's where my breakthrough was and came through. God grant me what? The serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's where it's at. And that's where my healing came. And what happened is through that, I learned how to go back another way. What happened is that I would pray. Talking about going back another way on this particular situation because it was so close to me. And I know how to pray. But every time I got up from prayer, moved out of prayer, I noticed that the stuff kept being the same. I kept getting the same results. I kept getting the same results. But what I learned was through this feeling that I was going back to the mess the same old way. I was going back to this mess the same old way. So if you have a sickness that you're in prayer about or for, you can't pray and then get up from that prayer and go back into the old sickness the same state of mind. 
with the same old talk, with the same old walk, with the same old act, and with the same old split, with the same old attitude, with the same old expectation from life and from other people. If you have a situation in finances, job, income, business, material, provision stuff, and you are praying for a change, where I had you can't come out of that crap going back in life with the same old walk, with the same old talk, with the same old attitude, with the same old script, with the same old state of mind. You've got to go back in a different attitude and a feeling of it is already done, already finished, already healed, and smell like it. <laughs> They see you coming different. <coughs> People have to see you coming here. They have to see you coming with a stop. Don't you can't say no story. I got news for you. People don't want to hear. <laughs> you don't want to hear. You don't want to hear people say no story. And you act like somebody want to hear yours. <laughs> Abortion. <laughs> you are aborting your healing by the same old talk, by the same old script, by the same old smell. What sent you there? People ask me sometimes. I don't wear cloths and fragrances, but they stop. I go shopping. Men was size of the Are you a mess? They feel it. People feel it. People sense you. They sense sickness. They sense broken heartedness. They sense loneliness. They sense one thing, it ain't another. If you're, if, if you're exuding that, if you're radiating that, you attract it. What you radiate, you draw, you attract. You can't go back the same old way. It's really like there in Romans 12 too. Be not conformed to this world. That means your old state of mind, your old state of being, your old what you know. But be ye transformed, be changed by the renewing of your mind. If you keep on doing the same old thing, the same old way, talking the same old talk, guess what? That's the definition of insanity. If you're expecting different results. <laughs> <laughs> really. So as we talk about going back another way, we're not talking about going north, south, east, and west. We're not talking about direction. We're talking about going back in a new state of mind. We're talking about going back in a new attitude. A new consciousness, a new being. That's how we're going into next year. Well, the scripture put it this way you can't put old wine, what? Say it out. New skin, new skin, new bottles. You can't put old wine in a new skin. Well, see, they didn't have glass bottles back in those days. You know? <laughs> All right? You can't put new wine into. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to take you to your pass outs. And if you don't have one, the uh, helpers will make you make sure you get one. Raise up your hand and because you, they were given out of the door. And I'm going to read to you the reading that was so excellently read by our sister Stephanie here. It's on Herod. Herod is what? The ego. Come on. All right? The ego. We're talking about the ego here. And it reads here, I'm going to read chapter Matthew, Matthew chapter 2, where it talks about the three wise men who follow the star to the newborn child. And, it, and, it, and it's talking about Herod. Here's somebody who has fun with these facts. Let's read. The ruling will of the ego. Herod represents the ruling will of the ego in the sense consciousness. This ruling will is what? 
This ruling will is temporal, and the next paragraph is going to define what temporal is. This ruling ego is temporal because it does not understand man's true origin or the law of man's being. It is narrow, jealous, and destructive. Under its rule, man does not fulfill the law of his being. Now here's what temporal means. The man who lives in his appetites, in his passions, in his flesh, does not want anything but the flesh consciousness. When this is in the ascendancy, he seeks the things of the world and knows nothing about the hereafter or another world. That is hell. And if we do not what? Christ, what will he do? He will slay the Christ child. Of course, the miracle says. The Bible is a fearful thing for the eyes of the ego. You know why? It's a manual. It's a personal operations manual on how to kill. How to defeat it. How to annihilate it. How to wash it out. And all those stories are representative stories. They are lessons in practical Christianity. How to use the law of mind in your life. That's what the Bible stories are about. They're, they're the characters in there and all those stories are psychological dramas of things that are acting out in your own life how to change, how to heal, how to reverse, how to go home to heaven and live with Jesus. <laughs> oh, come on now. And the ego does not want you to understand it. So that's what I am doing here by visiting Matthew chapter 2 and talking about the story of the Christ child. But you have to deal with it symbolically in order to Understand it as a parable to heal your mind and to heal your life. So let's start off by understanding that where it says here, and if we do not watch him, he will slay the Christ child. The Christ child symbolically represents the remittance, which to us means here, that little innocent new birth of an idea in your mind. That's, 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 the, that's, 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 that's the little child that's being born. An idea that comes to your mind. A prayer request, a prayer need. Whatever it is that God, the Holy Spirit, is announcing to you that it is time for that thing to be born through you, for you to manifest your purpose in life, your vision, what you have came here, your mission. All of those things. That's that when that idea hits, <coughs> it's the idea for something. To, it's time for it to be born. And when that time comes, there's nothing that can stop it against your will. <laughs> Unless you let it. And this is the thing that comes to kill it. John chapter 10, 10 says to you, but the thief comes, but to kill, steal, and to destroy. That's the ego's mission. Is your death. But the Bible teaches you how to kill it. How to kill something that is not real. Let's look at the next one. We must be on our guard against this sun sense mind and take tender care of what? You read that. Of Is there something that you're working on? Is there some change in your life that you need to, something that you move out of your life, something to revise, something to reverse, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. That's that idea. That's that Christ child. 
And it says, what you just read, we must be on our guard against this subtle sense mind, which is error, and take tender care of the little innocent new idea that has been born deep down in the heart. We must not give it over to the keeping of error. We must nurture it, care for it, and hide it away. If necessary, we should take it down into Egypt or darkness in the subconscious when Herod seeks to kill it. <laughs> Watch for this destroying thought, which is satisfied with what? With the old, which is trying to carry the old conditions, the old world, and even flesh and blood into the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. A new man is necessary. A new man, a new body, a new mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew the mind and the body will follow. Renew the mind, the body means the demonstration of your healing. The body means the outworking of the law in your life. Your prayer manifesting. Your stuff showing up and unknown. That's the body. Anything on the outer, it will materialize. You do not know how. So now we're going to go to your backside of your pass out, Matthew chapter 2. Anybody want to leave? All right. Watch out. Here comes you. If you say it's going to happen to you, it's going to happen to all of us up in here today. Because we're all leaving this place another way. I am going back another way. Come on. I am going back another way. Come on. I am going back another way. Come on. I am going back another way. Watch this. Matthew chapter 1, 2, 3, 4 says this. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come to worship him. See, the ego is a deceiver. A deceiver. Subtle. Always sneaking around. And, uh, if John 10, 10 says, but the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, how does it do? What is its way? It's through relationships. Through your cousin. <laughs> and you marry them. Yeah, you marry them. And you give birth to them. They're called children. Then they start dividing up and showing up with aunts and uncles and nephews and then neighbors and then co-workers and then, you know, dealers and sellers and real estate. Then brothers and sisters. How do you think he does it? Through relationships. So you cannot escape this. That's a part of the human experience. Parents are always showing up in subtle ways. Well, he says, watch, did Watch. Next verse. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, you know, right, he was troubled. And all of Jerusalem with him. Then Herod sent a private message to these wise men, asking them to come see him. Then he told them, hey, um, try to keep on going. See, they already had seen the star, they knew that he was in Bethlehem, and so they were on their way. Go on to Bethlehem and search for the child. And when you find him, come back. Tell me where he is so I can go in and worship him too. You didn't look at for which you've been praying. And what he's doing is stealing your blessing. Killing your dream, killing your vision, killing your healing, killing your healing in this relationship, killing it, killing it before it can happen. But it can only happen if you let it. Only if you let it. If you change your mind, the way I'm teaching here today, he did. 
But if you want to hold on, God can't help you. He gives you something that's called free will. Amen. It will be illegal for God to stop your blessing if you want to hold on to the best. Mm -hmm. If you want to hold on to the old way of seeing, to the old script, the old stuff, the old I remember stuff. <laughs> free will says that he gives you the freedom to hold on to it till you die. God can't violate his own laws. Come on. And come back and tell them. Well, what we're talking about here, the, the next verse says, we must be on our guard against this, this subtle sense of mind. And take tender care of what? The little innocent new idea that has been born deep down in the heart. We must not give it over to the keeping of Herod. We must nurture it, care for it, and hide it away. Well, <coughs> Entering the house where the baby and Mary, his mother, were. You see that? <coughs> they threw themselves down before him, worshiping him. Then, you see why I separated that word, then? I want you to pay attention to that because in Bible reading, every word has a significance. Every A, D, A, all of those words are important, read, from the right spirit while you're listening to the Holy Spirit interpreting the story in the meaning to you. <coughs> and so for me, he says, tell him to pause that thing. Mm -hmm. Then they did something. They opened their presence and gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then they opened their presence and gave. This is one of the things that block our healing. We keep on doing the same old thing the same old way. You got to make a change. You see what happened was, I see it like this, without words, say without words. Come on, without words. Without words, before they left, where they started from, they went to walk. <laughs> They didn't say, oh, look, she doesn't have a baby. Let's go home and go get him something. No. <laughs> they came with gifts. So what happened is they came in the confidence. They came in the certainty. They came in the assurance that they were going to find what they were looking for. They came in a feeling that I'm going to find that Christ child. Satan's house. And I'm going to be guided by the star. I'm going to be divinely led. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. When you pray, you have to get into the attitude of already being there. Already done. Already. Yeah, are you coming with your gifts? No, you're going to get it after you receive some. When I get there, I'm going to get it again. They came with the gift. When you're praying for something, you've got to come in the attitude that I'm going to get what I'm asking for, I'm going to receive what I'm expecting, and I'm going to be already dressed like it. I'm waiting for it. I got my table set. I got my bed made up. Whatever it is. I remember a long time ago, when I first started off, I was doing what my topic was, sleeping single in a double bed. Sleeping <laughs> <laughs> single in his upper bed. Well, I was teaching them, you know, what to do. These were young people. But I was young people. I was crazy. <laughs> but we had fun. And it worked. For a lot of but the point is, you just got to get into the attitude of already receiving, already having. And you've got to walk like it, talk like it, smell like it, expect like it, give like it. I heard you say at the beginning that Erdogan does not accept a stipend or pay for speaking here. This is the mother church. 
my spiritual brain is here. You understand what I'm saying? This is home base. And you're in a re 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 rebuilding mode. I see what's happening. I know that you're starting all over again. Now, how am I going to come in here and say, well, what you need to know is that I'm already paid. People hear me talking about miracles that happened in my life and things, the blessings, but what they don't hear, then they try to go and do the same thing. You listen to the thing. No, it ain't working like that. <laughs> but I don't stand here also and say, well, I do. See, I do first. I give first, and it comes. I'm always in a boy. Anybody knows me that I'm giving, 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 giving. Not just money. Not just money. Time. Thought. Presence. I smell, I smell, I'm giving you something. <laughs> Just behind me, I'm getting you something. Look at me, let me look at you. I'm giving you something. I'm stuck in giving. And guess what? I'm correspondingly stuck in this. God's blessing me all the time in all different directions. I am never in want or in need. Because my good shows up before. Amen. When the need is, is there, the, the answer is there. That's my Amen. expectation. But I have to tell you, when you hear me talking about blessing, I'm doing it. I'm releasing it. And so, they came bringing gifts, which is a demonstration of certainty. That's the attitude that you go into 2018 with, into next year with. Go into that attitude of expectancy, that, ex that attitude of certainty, that attitude of assurance. I know, and I know, and I know that I know that everything is going to be all right. Amen. Yes. Yes. Be prepared for bad news. Because as long as you got them cousins, you're going to get bad news. <laughs> Starting tomorrow, oh, you will respond and stop reacting. You're going back another way. The doctor, I mean, we're 60, 70, 80 years old. The doctor don't get crazy sometimes. They don't get a little cloudy minded. They're going to be a little confused. They're going to read the report. What are you going to do when they tell you And what are you doing now because they told you that? Uh, I hope I can control myself right now. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Take a deep breath. <sighs> yes. <laughs> so about a week ago, just two weeks ago, right for six months. Visit. I don't know if it was that afternoon or the next day, but a little bit while later, the doctor comes. <laughs> What's happening? This alarm in her voice. I said, Yes. <laughs> well, you know, you did blood work. You gotta be careful. <laughs> you go back into when, when you wake up tomorrow. You better go back another way. You gotta go back with a different script, you gotta go with their attitude, you gotta go back with a different expectation. Because the stuff that you got now is only there because of how you accepted and reacted instead of responding when it was told you. I was just looking at the numbers and you have kidney failure. So I said, really? <laughs> and uh what are you doing? You know, or, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to come back in a few days now and make sure, and I want you to do that blood work and then we'll schedule an appointment. I said, well, wait a minute. I want to know why I come back in. Because I got a cousin every time I go to visit, visit he makes me this big strong drink of Patron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. When I was going to do some of them, I tell you what I did. Well, I've been mixing orange juice and gin on a regular basis. You know, I had to. You know, I was going to like that. I was going to like with beer. You know, because I thought that would make me sleep because I couldn't sleep naturally because I was messed up. So I said, I messed up again. I said, what do I got? I do one cup of coffee each morning, you know, and I don't drink coffee all through the day, but it's a wake up, and I think, well, I got to, so she said, well, coffee, it just gives, what do you call it, it doesn't make it, make it easier. So, <laughs> that ready, you know. And so, come back that week, in a few days. So, when that week came, I did not go. You know why I didn't go? My mind wasn't ready. So I went to my uh, cousin's house that weekend. He made me this big drink. <laughs> 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 and I wanted it so bad. I didn't want to tell him that I wasn't going to drink. I didn't want it for any reason, because when I come back again, I won't smell. <laughs> so I pretended I was drink. <laughs> and then my, my, my cousin was sitting next to me. I said, I'm going to stop. I said, I'm not drink. Because I just wanted to, I'm drinking water, you know, and I'm saying, no, I'm not. So what happened was, I was drinking water. Because she also said, you know, maybe you were, she said, I want you to drink plenty of water because I want you to be dehydrated. So I did water, 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 water. I was drinking water. Because she said something. She said, are you listening? I'm saying an angel up here. See, the angel will appear. The angel will appear with the divorce of God, will tell you, uh, the, the, of course, America says the ego speaks first and the Holy Spirit reinterprets what the ego oh, says. See, that was the ego. Now, the Holy Spirit is reinterpreting, telling me to listen. I train my mind to listen. She said, first thing, kidney failure, then she said, dehydration. Remember? She said, drink a lot of water. Dinner. So I decided to go for door number two. <laughs> Next day, a doctor called. Might have been, you know, how their their people could have been a sister or whoever was supposed to call. I'm just calling to give you a to discuss your blood work. And da 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 da. I said yes. <laughs> and she said, well, your numbers when you came in as far as like 1.40, were they creatinine? What they call? Yeah, creatinine. Creatinine. Is that right? Creatinine. One creatinine. All the way. One point four. That's high. And that means you you out of here. So she said, but now it's 1.1. 1 .1. I said, that's wrong, that's wrong. That's okay. That means you don't have it now. Mm -hmm. Am I right? right? Do you think I asked her any questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I told her when the doctor said I was an animal? <laughs> didn't, we didn't talk about it? No. Thanks for calling. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got my beer. <laughs> When bad news comes, 
How are you going to respond? Not the same old way. The situation that I dealt with for two years only changed because I changed. It's because I learned to see the person differently. I learned to hear differently. And when I learned to see what was not there through what I thought was there, then my healing came. So let me close. They came bearing gifts, which simply mean to us in this context, they came <coughs> to worship him. They were giving the gifts to themselves with a heightened consciousness of gratitude of every sound of the Lord, the baby Jesus, who was promised. They knew that he was promised. They found the promise. What was the promise? The promise was Jesus, the man, God appearing in physical form, in a manner in which he could live among humanity and be the great worship, the great example to lead him back to the place where he never left. And this is what this teaching is all about. As the human gave way to the divine, the man, Jesus, became the Christ. And he said, all of these things I do, you can do. And even greater things than these shall you do. And so it is.